on time God. And we bless him for being on time. I thank each and every single one of you that are here on this morning that have come out to worship the Lord. All of you that are visiting with us, as always, we're grateful to have you in our midst, as well as for those of you that are watching us via live stream. We're glad to have you here with us today. And we want to let you know that this is the day that the Lord has made. And as a result, you ought to do what? You ought to rejoice and you ought to be glad in it. We thank God for his blessings and for his mercy. I thank God for this day, 17 years ago, I preached my first gospel sermon. This day, 17 years ago. Y'all, I remember they had to put a milk crate behind the pulpit because I wasn't tall enough to see over the podium. And I tell y'all, I did not by any stretch of the imagination understand what I was doing at the time. But I thank God that he knew what he was doing in my life. I thank God that I did not understand the full scope of what God was doing in my life. But can I tell you, maybe he has you somewhere that you don't understand the full scope of all of what God is doing in your life right now. But I want to tell you like the queen, they told the queen and she even said, the half has not been told. The half has not been told. And I thank God that even where I am right now, I can still say the half has not been told. We thank each and every, those of you that came out on yesterday. It would have been nice to see more of us, but I thank God for those of you that came out on yesterday and supported the family day as well as the toy drive. And let me just tell y'all how good God is in case you want to try my God. You know, I was sitting there and people had came in and they had laid their gifts on the table and things like that. And I was like, man, we could do better than this. I said that to myself. And before I know it, there was a man that came in. I never met him before. He never met me before. He brought his kids by. He dropped them off. Kids never been here before. Didn't know me from Adam and Steve. He just dropped his kids off and left them here because his sister told him about what we were doing over here yesterday. The man brought gifts in excess of $300. Then left and came back and put some blue bills in my hand and told me to go get some more presents. Oh. Who won, sir? Oh. A God like this. You better try him and see, church. Let me tell you, you looking for it to come from the east. God sent it in from the west. You know, a place where we expecting to get stuff from. Let me tell you, God said, you know what, child of God? You don't have to worry about it at the end of the day. I'm going to make sure that you got what you need. And let me tell y'all, as a result, we now have 71 toys that were donated to our Toys for Tots Drive. And they're still coming in. Y'all, I posted on Facebook and I got people all over saying, hey, I want to send $20. I want to send $10. I want to send $20 so they can support the work that is going on. Amen. God is a good God. He is a good God. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord on this morning? Amen. Amen. I believe you came to the right place. We'll be in the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter number 21. The gospel according to St. Matthew chapter number 21. And we will begin reading at verse number 28 and conclude at verse number 32. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And the Bible says, but what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. That's a pretty straight up answer. But afterward, he repented, and he went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I'll go, sir. But he was just lying. He didn't go. Which of them did the will of his father. They said unto him, the first. Jesus said unto them, verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. That the, for John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not, 
But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, the Lord, be acceptable in my sight. If you would go with me to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Do I say, gracious Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this time. We are grateful for this moment that you have blessed us with, that we may come and feast at the table of your word. Father, there are many that have come to this place on this morning seeking various things. I pray that you will be God in all of their situations. Father, we pray at this time as we're about to go into your word. Father, I pray that your word, Father, will be a lamp unto somebody's feet and a light unto their path. Lead them into the ways of righteousness. Maybe there's somebody in our midst that does not share in our religious conviction. Father, we pray that at the end, the result of it, they will come running hollering, asking that question, what must I do in order that my soul might be saved? And if you do this for us, we'll be so ever mindful to glorify you and to give you the praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Let all those that love God say amen. amen. Jesus said, assuredly, I say to you that tax collectors and harlots will enter the kingdom of God before you. That's tough language, y'all. Oh, I forgot my message, didn't I? Yeah, I want to give y'all the subject, praise God. You can come out better than you went in. That's our message this morning. You can come out better than you went in. I thought Jesus was a sweet and kind Jesus, didn't you? But he says, for John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But tax collectors and harlots believed him, and when you saw it, you did not afterward relent and believe him. What a powerful lesson. Jesus taught about two sons and their father. You know, most of the times when we think about two sons, we think about the prodigal son story over in Luke chapter 15. And this is the forgotten sons and father, but this is a powerful lesson that I want to share with you today from this that I want to try to really get down into your soul this morning, church, to really get down into your spirit because we can do better than what we're doing now. Amen, lights. We can do more than what we are doing right now. We can do better than we are on our way out than we were on our way in. The two sons represent for us this morning Two different directions that life can take you. The father said to both of them, what did he want them to do? Go out into my field and do what? Sit down. Go out into my field and work. The father here represents God. The field is the world. The harvest is the field. And he said to his sons, go into the field and work. And the one son said, I go. But remarkably, the Bible said he didn't go. The King James put it this way. He said, I'll do it, Dad. I'm in. Let's go. But when the dad looked out, he was not there in the field. The second boy, like us, came with an attitude. And he said, I ain't going. I ain't going out there in the field. But the scripture said later that he repented and he did the will of his father. Two different ways, church, two responsibilities for every person under the sound of my voice and all a person that are here, those of you that are watching via live stream, you got two possibilities. The one son is an example of someone who started out well. I'll do it. I'm all in. I'll serve you. I'll work in the church. I'll work in the field. I'll work in the harvest. I'll use my talents. I'll use my gifts, my resources. I'm going to do the will of God. I'm going to be a part of the harvest. I'm going to do all of this stuff so that I can be used for the glory of God. But that person becomes distracted. He made the promise he started, but along the way, he lost his way and somehow he fell by the wayside. There's more than one way, church, that you can become lost. The Bible in Luke chapter 15 talks about three lost things. It shows us three ways that we as individuals can become lost. There were the lost sheep, the lost son, 
and the lost coin. Not all are the same kind of lost. The first one, the lost sheep, was lost because it wandered away. Somebody say it wandered away. It didn't intend to get lost. It just started nibbling and it got away and got some distance between the sheep and the shepherd. And it just started wandering further and further away. And somehow it looked up and all the other sheep were gone and everything looked confusing. And it was lost and it was in wolf country and it didn't even know how it got there. It's one thing, you know, when you do something intentional. But there are people today who are lost who just wandered off. They go to church, they're sheep. They're not a goat, it's still a sheep. It's possible for a sheep to wander, to drift further and further away. I know I wasn't gonna get no amen, so I brought him with me this morning. Have you ever been lost? Now, many of us, including me, won't understand this, but you know, before we had Siri, folk had to look at paper to find out where they were going. You know, you couldn't say, Siri, take me to Montgomery. Siri wasn't around back then. You know, there were people that at one time you had to take out the big old map and you had to, they had to spread it out and say, okay, we are here. And, you know, we want to get over here. You know, we got to get over there. But it is so easy, I would have thought, to lose your direction. When you don't have something that is consistently telling you, take a right over here, take a left over here. It's easy for one to get confused and to get lost. If you like being lost, if you like the world and the sin and all of that stuff that you're doing more than you love the church, let me help you out this morning. You are either a sheep or a goat. You got two choices. You are either a sheep or a goat. Jesus said, and if you're a sheep, you don't like being lost. And when you hear a sermon like this, you want to get back quick into the shepherd's arms. But people who are not saved, they are not sheep. They don't want to get back. They have no intentions on getting back. They're okay living their life away from God. That means you are not a sheep. You are a goat. And unless you repent, heaven will not be your home. That's the gospel church. We need to hear straight preaching in the day and time that we live in right now. We don't have time, church. You are either a sheep or you are a goat. And if something is in your nature, here's how you know you are a sheep. Something in you. If you feel yourself drifting and you hear the call of the shepherd, it instantly, even though you drifted, even though you got far away, even though you shouldn't be over there, something in you says, I got to go back home. I can't stay out here. I'm not supposed to be out here. This is not God's will for my life. Now watch this. The lost sheep wandered away, but the lost son walked away. The lost sheep wandered away, but the lost son walked away. What does that mean? It was intentional. It wasn't an accident. He knew exactly what he was doing. He said, give me my money. It's my, the commercial says, it's my money and I want it now. Give it to me. I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing. He went out, the Bible says, into a foreign country. I chose to do this. I'm not wandering away. I'm not wanting to get back on the right path. I'm not missing going into the right direction. I like where I am. I join myself to this foreign country. This is my new world. These are my new people. I don't want that. I don't want the church. That's the difference between the lost sheep. It wandered away, but was glad to get back home. The other one, the lost son, walked away. It's interesting that the shepherd was commanded to go get the lost sheep. But the father never leaves to go get the lost son. 
He had to go out there and get the sheep, y'all. But the son had to find his way back home. Now listen to me carefully because you can't find a lost son. You can't find a lost son, church. He got to find himself. That's, that's a blessing for some of y'all in here right now. Stressed out over people in your family and people that you know that ain't standing by God, don't love God, and you worrying yourself to death over somebody else's soul. Can I remind you that you got to work out your own soul salvation with fear and with trembling, and at the end of the day, you can encourage an individual to stay faithful to God, to support the work of God, but at the end of the day, it's up to that individual whether or not they are going to get up and do what it is that God has called for them. Them to do you know what you signed up for when you went down into the watery grave of baptism you said lord i'm gonna serve you with everything that i got until the very last breath in my body and god wants you to remain true to what you told him i ain't talking about what nobody else said i'm talking about what you told the lord there's not enough talking that you can do to find a lost son. And it was when the prodigal was in the pig pen, the Bible says, these amazing words in Luke 15, he came to himself. Somebody look at this morning and say, you need to come to yourself. Yeah, you didn't know it, but they needed that this morning. You need to come to yourself. And when he found and came to himself, then he said, I need to go home to my father's house. I've been out here too long. I'm not supposed to be here. My dad is serving, eating good, and I'm out here eating a slot from the hall. I need to go back to my father's house. But never did his father come looking for him until he saw him coming home. And when he started coming home, church, you know what he did. He ran with the coat, with the ring, with the shoes, and covered his disgrace and brought him back and said, look what God has done. My son has come home. Y'all go out there and kill the fattest cat. Let's have a party. And let's never talk about this again. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I'm praying today that you can come to yourself. You were not born to be a druggie. You were not born to drown your sorrows with alcohol. Somebody out here, you were called and you are chosen of God. And you came to this place today. You are welcome home today. You need to turn from your wicked ways and you need to come on home, y'all. The hearse wheels are still rolling. You need to come on home. Lifetime is not as long as it once was. You need to come home. And then there's the lost coin. So you got the lost sheep, you got the lost son, and you got the lost coin. And it was lost, but listen at this, it didn't go nowhere. <laughs> you don't have to go anywhere to be lost. But when you got the lost coin and it was lost and it didn't go anywhere, it was lost in the house. The Bible said that there was a woman who lost the coin in the house. It was there in the house. It stayed right there, y'all. We think everybody who sits on these seats are saved and going to heaven because they came to church. But you can be in the house and still be lost. You can be in a gospel preaching church where the spirit of God is moving and you can be just as lost as a goose in a snowstorm. Amen. You can be lost, church, sitting in the house. Why? Because too many of us are playing religious games. I know y'all didn't come to hear the truth this morning, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Too many of us are playing church. And it shows in our devotion to God. The Bible said that the woman took the broom and started sweeping the house. 
stirring up the dust, trying to find the coin because the coin was there. It had not lost its value, y'all. It was out of circulation. I'm praying that the Spirit of God will bring his broom in the Sweetwater Church of Christ into this temple, into this house of God, into our homes and into our families. And those of us who are here and we're still valuable, we just lost. We're out of circulation. We really aren't praising God and loving God like we ought to. Lord, sweep the dust out of the house. Sweep the world out of the house. Sweep ungodliness out of the house until we learn how to love you, God, like we really ought to love you. Lord, get the dirt off of us so we can finish better than we came in. Get the dirt off of us. We have come too far to get right here and get stuck. Lord, get it off of us. You got to be willing to be done with the ways that you have right now. I want Jesus in my final hour like I never wanted him before. Church, you ought to want him every single day. And I came to tell y'all, Jesus is looking for folk that are committed to more than just Sunday morning. God is looking for people that are going to sell themselves out. People that are going to be devoted to the cause of Christ. Let me tell you, every now and then, you're going to have to schedule some things around the church instead of scheduling the church around everything. We got to stop putting God on the back burner, acting like God don't matter no more. You're still wanting him to wake you up in the morning. You're still walking around talking about I'm blessed and I'm highly favored, but you don't love God. You don't put forth any effort to serve God. He is the last thing on some of our minds. Lord, get the dust out of the house. The second son, he's a late bloomer. The Bible said the other boy, now the boy who started out strong is never seen again. But then there was the other son. When his dad said go in the field, he didn't play and he didn't pretend. I ain't going. It's hot. And I got plans. I'm going to hang out with my friend. I ain't going to no field today. That's what he told him. He refused. Listen, he refused the call of his father. He refused it, y'all. He said, that's too much of an intrusion on my plans. Don't that sound like us? I don't want that. I want my own life. In other words, he stumbled out of the starting gate. He ran with the wrong crowd. He was out there with the fornicators, with the idolaters, with the thieves, with the drunkard. And I'm preaching to people today, and maybe you didn't start out well. Maybe you stumbled at the gate. Maybe you weren't raised in a Christian home. Maybe you were raised in another faith, and you didn't start out well. Maybe you started, and something happened, and you stumbled. Maybe the church hurt your feelings. Maybe the preacher hurt your feelings. But I've come to tell you that that is not the end of your walk with God. You got to learn how to get over it. This is how Jesus said. You got to sometimes shake the dust off your feet and you got to keep right on going. Oh, I, folk with church hurt kill me. I just, I, 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 just, I just can't do that God stuff because of the folk in the church. And folk on your job, the same way as the folk in the church. And you stay out there every Monday morning on time. Boss, I'm here 13 minutes early. Can I get a raise? You know, you know you, you're there on time. And before time. Folk in your family, 10 times worse than us. You going to the family reunion? You hanging out? But let somebody in the church forget to speak to you. Let somebody in the church, they looking at the light. You thought they was cutting their eyes at you. Now you're ready to leave the church. Is it really that we are hurt? Or are we just looking for an excuse to get out of here? I 
can bring that up to 2021. Can I bring it up to 2021? Yes, sir. Well, you know, I'm, you know, I just, I'm just don't feel comfortable coming back right now. You know, because COVID, you know, and it's rampant, and you know, we got Omicron Percy IX that's out right now, and you know, we, you know, I really don't know, and I'm afraid. But you were just at Longhorn. You don't know. The folk cooking your food, they might have Omicron, Delta, uh, uh, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Thou, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Xi, Omicron, Pyro. See, they could have had anything. Can I get some more? Y'all could. I bet you'd have got all your Christmas shopping done, touching all that stuff. Folk been digging in their nose, touching the same stuff that you done touched. But not one time when you went in the store, did you walk up to anybody and say, anybody here got COVID? Why? Because you didn't care. That's the last thing on your mind. You there with Ling Ling getting your nails did. Tanya, Shonda, Boniqua, everybody up in there. No mask. No social distance. Y'all right up on each other. Ling Ling touching all on your hand. You just. Not one time did you walk around and then ask anybody. Y'all got COVID. But when it comes to the church, we want to use that as an excuse. But I want to let y'all know, not no excuse that you have is going to be good enough when you stand before God. Well, Lord, I served you up until the pandemic. I didn't think you wanted to serve me after the pandemic no more. God is looking for people that are not halfway in. God wants people that are all the way in. God ain't looking for nobody that's going to make excuses of why they can't do this and why they can't do that. God is looking for somebody that will say, here am my Lord, send me. Tight, but it's right. This man refused the call of his father. You may have stumbled at the gate, church. You may have started out wrong. But I came with a word for you today. You can start bad and end good. That's what the story proves to us. The Bible said in Habakkuk, your latter end shall be greater than your former. Oh, so encourage your neighbor this morning and say, your latter end shall be greater than your former. Just because you had a bad start, just because your daddy left and your mama was not there either, just because you had a bad start does not mean that's going to be a picture of the remainder of your life. Just because everybody around you is addicted, you don't have to be addicted to nothing but Jesus if you don't want to. You can have a bad start, but a good ending to your story, church. You say, well, preacher, how does that happen in my life? Something happened to that boy who started bad, and without his daddy chasing him, and without anybody, listen to this, he came to a place in his life where he said, I know what I'm here for. I've tried all of this and it did not satisfy. I know what peace is. I know where joy is. I know, I know where I can lose the guilt and condemnation and the shame and the disgrace in my life. I'm just going to get out there in the field and surrender my will to the Father. I'm going to do what I can do to the glory of God. And suddenly Jesus himself says, which one are greater? The one who said it and talked about it and started it but fell away? Or the one who got a bad start, had a bad start, got into a lot of bad stuff, ran with a lot of bad people, got into all kind of problems, but boy, the end up, right in the plan of God. Jesus said that one was the greatest. 
And he turned to the Pharisee, y'all, and said, harlots and fornicators and tax collectors, which they were known for their thievery and dishonesty under that system. He said, they will get into the kingdom of heaven. But you Pharisees who talk the talk, you are lost right in the house. You're not going to make it. But all those people who had a bad start that they brought to me their brokenness and they brought to me their failures and they brought to me their shame and their disgrace, I'm going to give them grace so that they can enter into the kingdom of heaven. And I will use them a whole lot quicker before I would use somebody like you who's lost in the house. You still have value. You're just not in circulation. God, help us to have such a spiritual temperature in this church that people cannot sit with dirt all over them and feel comfortable. I know this is a strong message, but we need strong preaching right now. How many of you are so glad and you be honest enough to admit, how many of you feel like you had a bad start? Or maybe if you didn't have a bad start, it's like you started out good, but somewhere along the way, you lost your way with God. That fire that you used to have, it ain't even a flickering flame no more. It didn't went out. Because you have not been attending to the fire like you should. Child, we got to work out our soul salvation, church. Uh, Deacon Reed, you shared that story this morning, but you know just like that was your neighbor, that could have been anybody up in here. And so many of us, we playing Russian roulette with our soul every single day of our lives, thinking you got all the time in the world to get yourself straight. Thinking you got all the time in the world. Oh, New Year's coming up. I'm going to be more faithful in the New Year. I'm going to serve God in the New Year. God, no, you ain't telling a lick of the truth. But we'll still say those things because it sounds good. When are we going to move beyond just saying stuff and actually doing what it is that we say that we are going to do? God said that it's a bad thing to make a vow to the Lord and don't keep it. Lord, I'm going to serve you, but we don't keep it. Lord, I'm going to be faithful, but we don't keep it. Lord, I, I want to be used for your glory, church, but we do not keep it. All of us, church, can be used to the glory of God. What I love about God is that he did not make all of us the same. Each and every single one of us have capacity, church. And with that, each and every single one of us have different gifts and talents that the Lord has given us. And if we'll use those gifts and talents to the glory of God, then the work of God can go forward. I ain't saying you're supposed to be a preacher or a song leader because you probably can't preach and probably can't sing. But you can park a car. You can volunteer. You can volunteer to study with somebody. You can sing in the group. You can give, church. You can do something for the harvest to be reached in this final hour. Because can I tell you that the bridegroom is on the way. The bridegroom is coming, church. Wonder how many of us, the oil is draining out and the fire is barely flickering right now. Church, we got to work on it. You got to remain stirred up for God. You got to remain after God. Remain with oil in your lamp and fire in your soul. We're going to be called up together with those who have died to meet the Lord in the air church. He's coming. You, we just keep on smirking. He's coming. Let folk keep on laughing. He's coming just like he said that he would. There are going to be many folk that consider themselves to be sheep. That when the Lord comes back, are going to find out that they were not what they thought they were. Can I tell you, it does us no good to have people look at us as A, B, and C. But God knows who we really are. 
God knows your heart. God knows your plans and God knows your intention. And you can fool all of us all the time. But you can't fool God none of the time. He knows your ending from your beginning. He knows your uprising from your downsetting. The Bible says that he is alpha. He is omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. So stop coming to church like you are the best thing since sliced bread. Like we got it all together. Like God don't need to work on us. You need to come in here because God needs to do a work on your life because by yourself you are no good. That's why you need God in your life to help you to make it. But he can't help nobody that think they all right. Come to church, know you full of sin, but you won't repent. What is it going to take? Do somebody got to come twist your arm? What is it going to take for us to do what we need to do? God ain't playing with us. We might think it's all fun and games, but God ain't playing with us. And one day, just like I'm standing in front of you right now, you got to stand before your God. You got to stand before him. And he don't want to hear all of that. Well, you know, Lord, I was in the church for 15, 20 years. And Lord, I did that. And Lord, he don't want to hear that. He knows your works. And you ain't going to have to tell him nothing because everything going to be wrote down. And he's going to judge us, church, according to those things. I think we forget that sometimes. We need to be reminded you are not going to be here forever. We are all strangers passing through barren land. We are all walking through the land of the dying, trying to get to the land of the living. All of us, church, we're striving. We're pushing forward. Everybody ain't going to heaven. But make sure you're one of the ones that do. Make sure church above all things. Forget what folk got to say and forget how folk feel. Make sure that when you stand before God, he can say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. You may have started out bad. But you can end better than you started out. I think sometimes we get in these ruts in life. And because of the way that our life is going and the choices that we made, we just feel like that we're just going to settle for where we are. Like we're not going to put forth the effort to make a change in our life. I'm good. I'm all right. I ain't cussed nobody out today. Yesterday was a struggle. Lord, help me. I'm not worse as everybody else. You see, and that's what we need. We need real talking. You know, we, we don't need all of this smoke and mirrors get you feeling good. You need something that when you leave here, it's going to cause you to change the way that you live your life. The word of God will do that for you. And can I tell you, I've been slinging the blade all morning long, but it got my hand just bleeding and all slid up over here. Why? Because the word of God is like a two-edged sword. And whether you are operating it or on the receiving end, you're going to get cut. Because the word of God ain't just for y'all. It's for all of us. From the pulpit to the back door, we got to do better. As individuals first. Before we can do better as a whole. So before you ask God to work on the church, ask God to work on you. Because the church cannot become better until we become better. When I stop looking at other people talking about their situations and what they got going on, their they lights might have got cut off today, but you didn't tell nobody when your lights got cut off a couple weeks ago. They might be struggling today, but you didn't tell nobody when you were struggling a couple weeks ago. I like how you pray. Don't, don't look down on nobody unless you're looking down to lift them up. And that's how we ought to be as the people of God. If you see somebody struggling, 
reach out to help them. Now, reaching out and helping them don't mean when they tell you what they got going on that you call Sue, Tom, Dick, and Harry and tell them what they got going on. Because just like it ain't none of your business, it ain't none of their business as well. But we ought to be there to encourage our brothers and our sisters. And why? You say, why should I be an encourager? Because you're going to want somebody to encourage you after a while. Why should I be there when people are going through something? Because it's them today, it could be you tomorrow, and you're going to be calling that, well, I need you to pray for me. I'm struggling, and I'm this and I'm that. We got to be willing to exert that same energy to our brothers and sisters when they find themselves in need. Church, we're going to end better than we are right now. My prayer to God is that he would work on all of us. As David said, I desire that God will create in us a clean heart and renew that right spirit within us. Lord, if you see anything in us that's not like you, take it out the way. Help us to be who you have called us to be. Church, life is but a vapor. It appears for a little while. And soon, it vanishes away. I don't care who you are, and I don't care how young you are. It makes no difference where you're going or how you're getting there. Young people in the room, teenagers, you're in the dawn of your life. Those of us, 20, 25, and 30, we're in the morning of our life. Those of you 35, 40, and 45, you're in the noonday of your life. Those of you 50, 55, and 60, you're in the afternoon of your life. Somebody done got past that. It's getting late in the evening. Oh, sun going down. That used to be true. But we know the leaning tree ain't always the first one to fall. Don't, don't be walking around here thinking, well, I got all my life ahead of me. You do not know what is around the corner. But God knows. So let's, let's live, church. Literally every day like it's our last let's put forth our best effort i'm not saying you're gonna be perfect don't take that from what i'm saying i'm not saying you're gonna do all that you should do because you are a human being and you are going to fall from time to time but it's not about how many times you fall but how many times can you get back up again don't allow your falling to keep you down but recognize that you serve a God that is able to pick you up, take your feet out of the miry clay, and set your feet up on a rock to stand. He wants to make you better today. He wants to take you from where you are to where he wants you to be. And your part is total surrender to the will of God to be used for his glory. God is seeking people that are going to love him with their whole heart their mind, their soul, and their body. That's what he's looking for. God don't want no seasonal employees. God wants people that are full-time. He wants people that are invested into the ministry. He's looking, even this morning, for somebody who came here and you're lost. You're drifting. You're like a ship without a sail on the water. You don't know which direction you're going. My humble plea and invitation to you this morning is that you need to come to Jesus. Stop putting off the choice that you need to make. Come on to Jesus. Well, I've been struggling. We all been struggling. You need to come on to Jesus. Well, I've been going through. Wake up, open your eyes. We all going through. But the difference in going through by yourself and going through with Jesus 
is that you got somebody to bring you through the storm, church. So for those of you that are lost, drifting this morning, come to Jesus. Come here in the word of God that he lived, that he died. And on the third day, he rose again with all power in his hand, according to the scripture. After you've heard the word, you need to believe what it is that you've heard. Repent of your sins and confess Christ as your savior. Be buried with him in baptism and the Lord will add you to his body. If you are here and you say, preacher, I'm the one. I've been here, but I've been lost. The fire that I once had is not the fire that I have right now. Not as strong as I used to be. Life has happened and I've gotten off of the pathway of God. Let us pray for you. And can I tell you, God is so good that he'll restore you back to his fold. If you're here today and you're subject to the invitation, why not take this opportunity and come to Jesus now as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. There's a fountain free this for you and me. Oh, let us head oh, haste to the brink. It is the fountain from the soul.